So this is the heat of the Prince Albert between Goldie Boat Club and the Oxford Brooks University. We see the crews still with their arms up, so they're signaling to the umpire they are not ready to start yet. There's a young Cambridge crew, three of the Goldie crew that were victorious in this year's boat race and one from the spare pair. Um, and they'll be looking to build on their boat race campaign successfully. So as we wait for this one, see uh, a look now at the Oxford Brooks crew. We're, we're joined by a former Oxford Attention! Brooks rower herself. Go! Uh, in the commentary box, Lady Catherine Douglas has also joined us, rowing in the Great Britain 8. And she will give us some comments as we get down the... Uh, down the course, and uh, what do you think of the start there? Very good clean start, both crews. So they made a good start down the island. You can see the, the difference it makes having the Cox laid down in the front of the boat. Um, it's Laura Hyatt in the front of the Oxford Brooks crew. And um, Catherine, what do you think of your uh, former university? Um, I, I back them, you know, um, it's, they've had a good start. Um, so this is their second um, university crew. They normally stack their eights up to Brooks, um, but they're, they're going well, smooth. And as you say, they're up against this experienced crew from Goldie. Um, three of the uh, the crew that raced um, in on boat race day in the Goldie crew, and um, also Brooks have been putting together a fantastic program. We've seen the eights really performing. Um, what do we see? Um, what do we see really going right here in this um, in this? Goldie crew in front of us now. Well, I think both crews are offered about 38, which is a good starting rate. I could see loose shoulders and nice connection and a, probably a little bit more of an efficient style as they get into the transition phase of the race, bringing the rate down towards something sustainable through the middle. Brooks looking a bit more strength, a little bit more um, power in the shoulders, but that tension might be causing them to uh, be a little bit less efficient. So Catherine, what's the training like at Oxford Brooks that gives us a crew that looks like this? It's tough, you know, um, the head coach Henry, he starts off the year with 200 plus boys all wanting to be picked, um, some for the student crews, some for the uh, ladies plate crews, and mostly you're trying to get into the eight, um, and if you're in a four you make it work, there's a lot of seat racing in fours. Um. So they'll be experienced at racing in fours where they might line up two fours for that seat race, send the two boats out, swap rowers between the boats, and, uh, and then race them again and see who's making the difference, and it's... It's uh, Jordan Peppermans in the stroke seat who's looking to make the uh, difference here. As he sits in the stroke seat, tries to keep that pace going, tries to make sure he keeps his crew in contact with the Goldie crew. I want to say he um, raced for South Africa um, as a junior. Um, so it's a very experienced stroke plan. And that experience at Junior World Championships will help them be able to deal with the pressure of being in this position, actually the pressure of being behind. And, and something you know about Oxford Brooks Rose, given the way you, they train, is that they certainly won't be wanting to give up. They will certainly keep the fight going here as the crews are coming out. They're past the barrier, and um, now it gets the difficult bit where the, the land goes away, and we get more out in the middle of the race, and you've got to dig deep. But this crew from Goldie look very efficient to me. Yeah, Brooks are definitely fighters. They, they train hard, they race hard. Um, they might come back. So uh, in the Cox's seat for the Goldie crew is Hugo uh, Ramanderson, the Cambridge president this year. And what a year he has had seeing all of the Cambridge crews victorious in the boat races, men's and women's and lightweights. And it was also the last year of Steve Trapmore, who's been a fantastic coach for Cambridge over the years, moving to the national squad. So although uh, young up and coming uh, athletes in the, in the boat, they've got the uh, experience of the victorious Cambridge president steering them, coaching them. And the job the Cox uh, does can't really be uh, overestimated here. It's a coach, it's where are we on the course, it's the information, and it's the encouragement to keep them rowing well. And they are rowing well as we take a look at the back there of Tom Strudwick in the bare seat of the Goldie crew. He, uh, he rode for Marlow in the quad um, here at the Forley in 2016. Catch that as one of the highlights of his career, getting through to the Saturday. Do we have a look there at the Cox? in the seat there, uh, Hugo Ramadson, as you say, Matt. Yeah, their backs just look very still, they're very relaxed, lots of separation, they look at ease there, as they row through. Yeah, and Catherine, it's, of course, it's, it's easier to look at ease when you've got this kind of uh, margin. Uh, but what, how do you compare the style of the two as they've gone through uh, between the Goldie crew and the Brooks crew? Goldie just look a bit racier, they look like they're rating a little bit higher and they look a bit more on top of the boat and lighter as they go through the water. 
um, as you say, Brooks, that they're fighters, they look tough, they're kind of tugging it a bit more. Um, legs are like going down the upper bodies, kind of taking over the legs. Um, whereas Goldie Crew, the legs are going down together, their bodies are still, they just look loose and, and easy. And it's a signature look, really, of the Cambridge crews that I think we've seen has been efficiency, and the signature of the Brooks crews has been power and aggression, I think, and we're seeing it really now on the face of the crew as they kind of keep hanging in there and keep working as hard as they can. Yeah, tired faces now uh, on the Brooks crews. They've really, they've really thrown everything in through the middle of the course here. It's going to be very difficult to get back on turns there, and uh, as Catherine says, the Cambridge guys just looking nicely in control as we look at the face uh, there, um, their stroke man who is uh, really calmly controlling the race from that position. There's nothing quite like sitting in the stroke seat with nobody in front of you looking back down a course in control of a race. It's a, a feeling of real confidence, isn't it? Yeah, there's nothing like it. Callum Sullivan, that is, in the stroke seat of the Goldie crew. Um, he's also raced here in the four league uh, in his younger days. Um, back but only in last year, in 2017, um, he was winning in that event um, before going on to do the Coupe Le Coupe de la Jeunesse. And he's a student of music at Cambridge University and he's certainly setting a great rhythm here in the boat, uh, which is something you need if you're going to sustain a campaign through the five days of Henry Roll Regatta. And it is, it's a rhythm and it's an efficiency where they're just not doing anything that slows the boat down. You can see they're just coming out to beautiful lengths from that overhead shot. If we get another shot of them from behind, you might see there's got little straws on the side of the boat to help them mark the arc, if you like, to make sure the arc of the oars is consistent. And on the overhead shot, you can see how tidy it was to see the straws just on the side of the boat. So you see them reaching out. They'll, they'll try to put the blade in the water just above that straw and they'll know they're coming out. Something like 57 degrees by just tapping that straw, knowing they're there. Hold it back through probably about 36 degrees and then release the boat. That's, that's pretty precise, Greg. You'd measure it to that level of precision, would you? We would measure it to that level of precision, and you would get um, telemetry data that would be collected, and then afterwards you get a printout with effectively a forced time curve, the sort of thing you might get if you were using a rowing machine, um, and the coach could look at the efficiency of each row and the length of each row, yeah. So the straws look amateur, but actually they're hyper-professional. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Looks, it does look slightly amateur having straws taped onto the side of the boat, but absolutely it's a, it's a visual mark they can use, and if they're collecting the data, it'll be highly scientific that they'll be able to go back, measure that data, and look at what's worked today, and perhaps look at what they might do differently when they race tomorrow. But uh, as we see it, a strong win there for the crew from Goldie, ahead of the crew from Oxford Brooks University and okay. confirmation there of that result. The win for Brooks, for, for Goldie over Oxford Brooks.